two months in a row of weak job data. I've got some concerns about whether this is a new trend, what the implications are. I'm going to show you some details and some perspective coming up. My name is Mike Bernardo, the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. All right, after a couple months this summer where job growth really met expectations or even exceeded expectations, unfortunately, we've got a new trend over the past couple of months. Take a look at these headlines. August jobs report disappoint only 235,000 jobs added when they were expecting three quarters of a million. And then just a couple weeks ago, September job growth even worse. They only expected a half million, but the number came in even worse, 194,000 jobs created. Now, you can look at the silver lining with this and say, well, wait a second though, uh, the, the unemployment rate has gone down. Yeah, check this out. The unemployment rate now stands at 4.8%. That is lower. That's a lower unemployment rate than at any time during the mid 70s to the mid 90s. That's like, what is it, 20 some years where this, where our, our unemployment rate is now lower. It's better than that entire couple decade time period. So, so things should be, should be good, right? We should be excited about that. Well, I'm actually concerned about what this is going to do to the overall economy. Take a look at the overall labor force participation rate. And, and I've done several videos about these sorts of issues before, so I'm sort of blending them all together, not, not, going, too, um, not going too deep on, on any of them. But take a look, and I've overlaid this chart on the labor force participation rate with the amount of stimulus and the, the, the assets of the Federal Reserve. And so, so take a look at this. You can see that's concerning. The labor force has shrunk considerably, and I'm going to say that's partly due to the growth, the, the emergence of technology and uh, baby boomers transitioning into retirement. So there's some other demographic issues there. But then just look at the end of that chart since the pandemic. Obviously, labor force participation rate dropped like a rock when the economy was shut down. And then as the economy and the demand has come back in an explosive way, thanks again to this overlay here of this chart, this $5 trillion that's been thrown into the economy. The demand has come back in, in abundance, and yet the labor force participation rate has come back moderately. It's only come back half. And I, I, my concern is we've got a slowing pace here. We're entering into the holiday season where retailers are sort of panicked and scrambling. Um, I volunteer at a couple organizations and we're wondering how, how in the world, like these aren't, these aren't great jobs, desirable jobs. They tend to be lower pay and they tend to require someone that's really committed and cares about the cause. And we're struggling. How are we going to find people? And the labor force participation rate isn't, isn't low because the need isn't there. We have more job openings by far than we have people looking for jobs. It's, it's, it's worse than it's ever been or as good as it's ever been, depending on whether the glass is half empty or half full. And if you take a look, I, I don't know if this data is accurate here, but I saw this tweet recently of how many people, I mean, look at how many people, at least from, this is what this, is what this individual says, uh, how many have started their own business or retired, meaning they're not really re-entering the, the labor force period. Okay, guys, so this is, this is concerning. And you might say, well, Mike, it's, it's two months worth of data. I know, but things are absolutely booming in the economy. And the labor force, this, this stubborn labor market is slowing things down. And I fear some very meaningful, significant implications of this. And, um, and, and I think ultimately it's going to impact the market, okay? Let's hit these rapid fire. I mean, the first one is, is wage growth. Again, I volunteer in a couple, a couple causes. Well, I'll just tell you right now. I'm just gonna throw this out there and then you can tell me whether I'm right, wrong, or, or whatever. But one of the places that I invest a lot of time is at our local uh, recreational baseball, youth baseball league and baseball park and, and help run a travel team and, and help out at the board and everything. And umpires. We, like who wants to volunteer to stand behind a plate while someone is throwing a baseball at you and you're probably going to get hit multiple times. And if that's not good enough, if that doesn't sound 
too desirable, you're also going to have parents standing about five feet away from you, protected by a fence, uh, yelling vulgar things at you and getting mad at every little decision you make. Okay, so sounds appealing, right? Who wouldn't want that job? Last year, last year we were running tournaments and it's about 30 bucks a game to be an umpire. And at the beginning of this year, it was, okay, wait, or, or not the beginning of this year, but begin, beginning of this season in the summer, it was like, oh, geez, 30, 30 bucks is not cutting it. We can't find anyone. Let's go to 40. Guys, I just had to do a round robin for my team this past weekend. We had to do 50 bucks, and we were still struggling to find people. I was contacting everyone I knew, just trying to find people, 50 bucks a game. This, to me, that's a small, that's a small indication of wage growth is definitely going to be there, okay? Now, how will that apply to every job? I have no idea, but, but simple economics, supply and demand, if there are, if there's high demand and limited supply, that's gonna drive up prices, and in, the, in this case, wages. That's a good thing for the employee. That can be a tricky thing for businesses and the economy. So to me, I think that's the, that's the most obvious natural implication of the stubborn labor market. The second though is even more concerning. I'll tell you another story. A meeting with a client yesterday who has, who has said, yeah, you know, my, my car is now over 200,000 miles. I really need a vehicle. And it's like, yeah, I know it's just, be patient though, not, not a great time. And they told me a quick story. They, they like this Kia Telluride, right? I, it's, those look nice, right? And a ton of them on the roads. Well, they, they saw one about an hour away. They, there was a dealership that had one on the lot. And so they reached out and said, okay, okay, uh, fine. Don't even worry about giving me any discounts or any deals or whatever. I'll just pay the sticker price. And the dealership laughed at him and said, yeah, yeah, right. This thing is going for 15,000 over the sticker price. There's no way I'm selling it for the sticker price because that's all I got, right? This again, supply and demand, that is going to drive up prices. There's all this talk about transitory, done a bunch of videos about that. And you know, I'm not a few, I, I don't know the future. I, I, I don't know, right? But to me, I have no idea. I have no idea how this is transitory inflation. Long-term technology will drive down prices. I know that. But right now, we've thrown four to five trillion dollars into the system all at once, okay? It's worked. It's created demand and created economic activity. And now there, we have distortions between supply and demand. I, I think prices will have to go up. Again, this is all connected back to these, to, these, uh, to, to these labor numbers. If you don't have enough employees working to produce product or provide services, then that's limited supply, right? If the demand is there because there's so much money sloshing around, that's going to drive prices. We can't produce as many Tellurides, therefore we've got just one sitting on the lot, therefore the price, instead of being sticker or a little above, is astronomically above. Does that make sense? That's, that's what's driving inflation. And then connected with that, then I mean, this is the, this is where it starts. The rubber starts hitting the road. Is then that will force the Federal Reserve to do something with interest rates. Now they've been avoiding that for a year. And as I record this, we just got even higher than expected inflation data again. And and the longer the Fed keeps saying no, it's temporary, it's temporary, it's temporary, they're they're sort of justified in keeping interest rates at record lows at zero percent. But at some point, they're going to have to. They're gonna to have to move interest rates off the floor and get them closer to the inflation rate. I know they don't want to. They want inflation to come back down to two, two and a half, three percent, and then they can start increasing the interest rate and get it close to that number. The longer that waits, the more dangerous inflation could get out of control, the more speculation and so on. And so to me, there's a interest rates will have to follow soup. Well, if interest rates right now are at record lows and you'd be foolish to not borrow money. Well, we're gonna gorge ourselves with debt just in time for interest rates to come back up. That could be extremely problematic. And then the fourth implication to me, how does this all, how does this all impact the markets? It creates uncertainty. It creates distortions in the market. I, I, to me, if, if we're struggling finding people to work and get, and get the job done, then we have, uh, then, then ultimately we'll, businesses will have to pay more for employees, reducing their profits. And you might say, good, you know, that, that's probably needed. I, I wouldn't necessarily argue with you. Well, if wages are going up, what does that do to profits? Profits go down. What does that do to the stock price? Stock price goes down. Or the stock price stays high, but that P-E ratio that keeps it at a high multiple, uh, potentially threatening longer term 
rates of return and, and future returns for the market. So, so that's one. What about inflation? If we do see inflation heating up, um, that also drives up costs which would drive down profits if employer if companies aren't able to increase their own revenue at the same level and pass that on to, to clients or customers there again threatens profits threatens the stock market with interest rates when will the federal reserve actually start raising interest rates how quickly will they have to do it that is going to be a huge huge influence on the market so to me all of the, you know, these, those other three points, it's all semantics because it's going to come down to then what does this labor market, this stubborn labor market, these, these implications, how is that ultimately going to manifest itself and impact the market? I'm, I'm cautious. I'm concerned. So what will we see for the labor market as we approach busy holiday season? I don't know. I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. I do know there are a lot of businesses facing significant demands and opportunities ready to grow and are, are unable to grow at the pace that they want simply because of the, the, the vacancies and gaps they have in their labor force. Hopefully, hopefully this is just a short-term trend and some of these implications can be, uh, can be figured out, but I am concerned about the recent trend of the labor market. Work with your CFP. What are the implications for you? How does this impact you? How does it impact your financial approach, your investment strategy? Work with your CFP on that. If you don't have a CFP, you can always contact one on my team. Find us online, corhorn.com. That's corhorn with K, wisemoneyshow.com. You can find us there as well, or give us a call, 574-247-5898. All right, there you have it. Go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.